Hello Internet! Welcome to a new episode of Blender Modeling for 3D Printing in these challenging times. This video shows another modeling technique with Blender based on 2D graphics data to speed up the modeling process. In one of my last videos, I already showed how to work with SVG graphics data. In this video, we will use graphics files of different formats like JPEG or PNG and use the graphic data to model surface structures or model parts. The modeling of surface patterns, engravings, icons or complex lettering on the model surfaces can be very complex and time consuming. On the other side, graphic patterns like images, sketches and lettering can be created very quickly in a 2D graphics program. We will use vertex displacement and texturing functions in Blender to solve that task and use 2D graphics data to add additional geometry to our models. The method is also suitable for the fast production of signs which can be useful at this time. Other possible uses are models as templates for drawings, inlays, cutouts or for CNC processing. And I'm sure many other possible applications. But enough words, let's start right after the intro. What does vertex displacement mean? In order to use 2D graphics data for modeling, we use vertex displacement. Roughly speaking, this is a method where vertices of a model can be moved on an axis after the overall modeling process, during the rendering of the model. Therefore, the model is enriched with additional geometry during the rendering, or like in Blender, as a post-process after the overall modeling. The values for the displacement comes from a separate source, like a texture. For example, the color information of individual pixels in a graphic file. Based on the color information and the color value, the vertex is moved on an axis. For example, the normal axis of the surrounding faces. In Blender, the displacement modifier can be used in conjunction with a texture file for this purpose. To show how graphic data, usually black and white data, affect the model geometry, I created a small example. For this purpose I used Inkscape to create a texture. I created a rectangle with a gradient from black to white, I added some lettering and included some dots to show how smaller details will be processed in the final result. The color value white is for the maximum height and the color value black is the maximum depth. I have textured my model so you can see the behavior of Blender and the displacement modifier. We should choose the resolution of the graphic data as high as possible so there is enough information to draw smooth edges. A high density resolution is fine in many cases. Better is a 4K resolution or larger where it is possible. The model should have a high resolution or the place where it is located should have a high resolution. But more about this later on. To see the effect of the resolution of the graphic file on the model, if used as a texture, I have used different resolutions to show you the results. The example shows that the smallest resolution has the most unclean and rough edges. As the resolution of the graphic file increases, the contours became sharper and sharper. As the pixels of the graphic and the vertices of the model fit together better. In the higher resolution you hardly see any outliers. 
but keep in mind it does not have to be perfect because of the resolution of your 3D printer and the printing process it will smooth out a lot of the details. Therefore, small cracks or steps are not visible later on. Here I export a biohazard symbol from a SVG file and export it to a file format with a pretty high resolution of 300 dpi. I want to print the symbol with my 3D printer to create a sign. In this example I use Adobe Illustrator as my graphic tool. There are also three alternatives you can use like Inkscape for vector graphics and GIMP for other graphic formats. I will provide some links in the video description below. The export function of Illustrator allows me to leave the background transparent. If you like this video and my channel around the topics of 3D design technology in combination with arts and crafts, please subscribe to my channel. This supports my work and motivates me to create more videos. Now let's look at a simple example. I want to have a symbol as an additional geometry on my model. For this I open Blender and leave the unit system on metric and meter with a unit of 1. Since we will be working with high resolution data, I do not want to go to a smaller unit like millimeters to avoid floating point errors with very small numerical values in Blender. I start the modeling by creating a plane in Blender. In the background Blender already creates a UV map for the created plane object and this planes as all, all um, as all primitives that created by blender already contain a uv map the uv map determines how the coordinates of a graphic file are assigned to the coordinates of a model after that i load the exported image of the biohazard symbol as a texture into blender so i can check the preview of the texture in the texture tab if the file can be read by blender and it is displayed in the preview there should be no problem during the processing of the file and i'm sure the file can be processed by the displays modifier keep in mind some problems occurred while working with transparent information in the graphic data therefore the best way is to omit transparent data in the graphic files Before we apply the displacement modifier, we need to prepare the model. Since our symbol should take up the entire surface of the plane, I will subdivide the entire plane. I now divide the sheet in edit mode by selecting edge and use the subdivide function. In the dialog box, I specify a subdivision of 100 and afterwards I divide the subdivision again with 6 subdivisions. Now we have created over 500,000 vertices and we will use these vertices for the displacement. Blender will try to map these vertices to the grayscale color information in the graphic file that, that I provide for displacement and will adjust the position of the vertice related to the color information. The axis for the displacement can be selected in the displacement modifier. The higher the subdivisions, the better is the result. But for 3D printing, we don't need a higher resolution in this case, because it can't be printed anyway. Now we activate the displays modifier for the plane object and select the texture we created in the beginning. Leave the direction on normal and under texture coordinates select local, which already should be the default setting. Local means to use the entire local vertex coordinates of the object for the texture mapping. For a complex mapping, we have to select UV mapping and so we can apply a displacement texture to selected areas of our model. In the next part of this topic, 
and the next video I will provide some more complex examples how we can use the displace modifier on specific areas on our model and therefore we use the UV map and the texture mapping functions in Blender. To limit the effect of a displace modifier to a specific area on a model, we can use and choose a vertex group. Using the parameters mid-level and strength allows us to select the starting point and the intensity of the displacement. I divided the plane again with edge subdivide. Therefore I have now a very high resolution with over 2 million vertices. But this gives me super sharp edges. I did this just for demonstration purpose. And we have to reduce this huge amount of vertices later on using the decimate modifier. After we have set the position and intensity, we can smooth and beautify the result a little bit with the smooth modifier, especially if you have strong overhangs. Here the factor of the smooth modifier can be used to bevel the edges a little bit and make them less steep. We can use the repeat parameter to smooth the overall model and especially our displacement. If we want to limit the effect of the smooth modifier to our displacement, we can create a vertex group that contains our displacement and add this vertex group in the smooth modifier. Next I want to display the image to texture the model in Blender. Ok, texturing is not necessary for vertex displacement, but in this video I will explain the overall procedure and show what happens with the model. To assign a texture to the model, I created a new material with a standard shader for the surface, principle BSDF. Under base color, I select the image texture and in the image texture selection options, I can then open an image file and load it into Blender. As an alternative, I can use the previously loaded image from the texture tab. It should be already listed in the drop-down list of the file selection. Now we should set the viewport shading to material preview and should now be able to see the graphic on the model. To me the presented process is very helpful and it can be a real time saver, especially for very detailed structures for embossing and engraving on or in your models. I will be happy to hear your opinion and suggestion for improvement. Constructive criticism is welcome and if you like the video, I would be glad about a like or a positive statement in the comments. Ok, now we have a nice looking model, but, but also we have a huge amount of vertices with, which can lead to many problems in the subsequent processing. Therefore we have to reduce the overall amount of vertices. We can use the decimate modifier. In many examples I was able to reduce the vertices by let's say around about 90% without losing too much quality. A too high number of vertices might lead to very high processing times and will lead to many other problems. For example, if we export a model to SDL and try to import it into a slicer program and if it has too many geometry or too many vertices, the slicer program cannot handle this and will not import the file. At least many slicer programs are limited in the amount of vertices they can handle. It's good advice to save this state of your work as a separate file version and so you have the chance to go back anytime. Before I now prepare the model for 3D printing, I apply all modifiers to have a final version of my object to work with. Finally, we can prepare our model for 3D printing. You can use the mesh cleanup function 
or the 3D Print Toolbox add-on to get rid of unnecessary geometry or to repair your model. For more details, just have a look into my video, I will add a link to the video right here. For 3D printing, we have to export the file as STL file and load it into a slicer software. In my case, I use Cura in the current version 4.5. The slicer software takes the model data and calculates the necessary instructions for the 3D printer. Because of my current Unix settings, I using the metric system with a blender unit of 1 meter. If I export my model in STL and import it into Cura, 1 meter will be interpreted as 1 millimeter. Either the models can be scaled directly in the export dialog in Blender or the scaling is done in Cura. More details about Blender and 3D printing and the related settings can be found in the video that I linked here. Here I show the result on my 3D printer. I'm using the Anycubic i3 Mega 3. This is a standard consumer FDM printer. Um, the settings are more or less standard Anycubic i3 Mega profile in the Cura software. I did use a layer height of 0.2 millimeters, so the details came out very, very nice and the edges were very smooth. Yeah, a very good looking result. As I already mentioned, in the next video I will use the Displace modifier to extend more complex 3D models and we will use the Displace modifier on specified areas of the model. For this we will have to work with the texturing functions and the UV maps. And we can use this technique to model very efficient and create models with a lot of detail. In my eyes, this is very interesting for people that are using Blender in combination with 3D printing, but that is all for today. I wish everyone good health at this time. And as we say in Germany, lasst euch nicht unterkriegen, which means something like, don't let it get you down. So, my best wishes to you and thanks for watching.